Yeah. So we're going to dive in, right? So I've got the big question for today. It's big, big, big question, which is big tech or big government, whom do you trust? And this is the question that we have to ask increasingly more and more because there's this government clampdown on the big tech companies from two angles, right? The privacy angle, and we'll talk some about that. It was that FTC order from last week. And then um, also the so-called censorship angle, right? That's in looming, that's the antitrust angle, although I don't have that in the program notes. But what I do have in the program notes, you get a chance. You said that you were eager to do this. We have the Missouri Senator, a Republican Senator, who is deciding that it is time to clamp down on social media for being too addictive. This is Josh Howley. So today's your chance. Republican from Missouri. I mean, he, Josh Howley has now become my favorite Republican senator, and he's, he's competing with like Elizabeth Warren and uh, who, who else on the, on the Democratic side? Bernie Sanders, who's a senator. He's competing with Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren as most hated senator in the U.S. Senate. And now here he put out this thing where he, he wants to ban. This is a bill, literally proposing a bill. This is what your senators, this is what your politicians are doing. This is what you are paying them to do. He's putting out a bill that would ban, that would ban addiction, uh, addiction, addictive technology. Mm -hmm. So it's called Social Media Addiction Reduction Technology Act. Social Media Addiction Technology, say that fast. Social Media Addiction <laughs> Technology Act, it's hard. Um, right. Basically wants to ban things that increase our viewership, like autoplay. You know how you scroll down Facebook and the video autoplays? That's no good because you have no choice. Right. If it starts to play, what, what choice do you have? You're a mere human with no real free will or no meaningful free will. And if you're just going to watch it. And I'm sure, you know, he probably wants to ban nice graphics and nice user interfaces. and any Notifications, right? Notifications. Uh, notifications. Notifications. Anything that might cause you to engage. Now, he really wants, and he says this, really wants to ban social media. I think the world would be a much better place without social media. But, but that's a little radical for him. So he just wants to do this. Now, there's already a bill by Mark Warner, Democrat of Virginia, and Deb Fisher, a Republican of Nebraska. I love these bipartisan bills. Whenever you, there's a bipartisan bill, I think, oh, my God, both the Democrats and Republicans have agreed about the ways in which they want to screw our lives. Mm -hmm. So they have a bill that they want to prohibit the largest online platforms from using dark patents by giving the FTC more jurisdiction over the issue. Dark patents are all these things, all these little gimmicks that technology companies have to, to engage you, to get you to stay engaged, to get you to stay on the platform. Because again, we know, because we're addicted to everything. I mean, I'm addicted to chocolate. You're addicted, I don't know, what are you addicted to, Amy? Uh, a coffee or, or something? You know. Yeah, so I've got my buttered coffee addiction going, basically. There's yeah. people addicted to, of course, alcohol and all that. That's genetically addicted and we're just genetically i think now you know about 15 years has passed since we've had 20 years of the internet i think we've genetically evolved now to be addicted to the internet so we have no free will in this regard so there is bipartisan coalitions to do this but that 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 is just like the the icing on the cake when it comes to our friend joshua rawley senator from the great state of Missouri because yes. by chance a few weeks ago I was doing some research about stuff and came across this guy and he is a leader in the senate in what we'll call what I've called or what they call themselves conservative nationalists he is a born-again evangelical complete and utter nutcase and Okay, so, so and, he, and he wrote, he gave a commencement address hmm. at his college, uh, New York. Do so you have time to, to hear this thing? Oh, certainly. King's College in New York City, which is a religious university in New York City. And he gave the commencement address. And I'm going to skim. I'm not going to read it all, but I'm going to skim. Here we go. 
For decades now, our politics and culture have been dominated by a particular philosophy of freedom. It is a philosophy of liberation from family and tradition, of escape from God and community, a philosophy of self-creation and mm -hmm. unrestricted, unfettered, wait for it, free choice. Oh, wow. Hmm. It is a philosophy that has defined our age, though it is far from new. And then he goes back and he, and he links this to some guy who I've never heard of, Pela, Pelagius. Pelagius, hmm. who I guess, was, was a, a, a Christian thinker uh, hmm. in 350 AD during the, the, the last days of the Roman Empire, a, a contemporary of Augustine, right? And he says, Pelagius, who's this really bad guy, held that individuals possessed a powerful capacity for achievement. In fact, he believed individuals could achieve their own salvation. It was just a matter of their living up to the perfection of which they were inherently capable. As, he, as this Pelagius has put it, since perfection is possible for man, it is obligatory. <laughs> Sounds a little objectivist, right? <laughs> Since perfection is possible, all the virtues are geared, you know, we, the virtue of pride is the virtue of perfection. Um, so he put it, uh, uh, the key was will and effort. If individuals worked hard enough and deployed their talented wisely enough, they could indeed be perfect. I like this Pelag Pelag Pelagius guy. Anyway, he's the devil, according to this. Of course, this drew the O of Augustine of Hippo. Augustine said that human nature was a permanent thing that it, it, was, it was dependent on God, we were all fallible, we suffered weakness and need. We remember Augustine's the one who used to whip himself after rolling in the snow <laughs> when he thought impure thoughts. Um, so this guy, you know, so he's riling against this in his commencement speech. He says, and, and it, this is towards the end, he says, because if freedom means choice among options, then the people with the most choices are the most free. Really, that's a confusion about what freedom means, of course. Mm -hmm. And that means the rich. Now, you'd think maybe, now, think if this could be Bernie Sanders or Elizabeth Warren talking, right? right? And that means the rich. And if salvation is about achievement, then those with the most accolades are righteous. And that means the elite and the strong. But if you don't have family wealth and you don't have a four-year degree, and that's 70% of Americans, well, the future is far less glowing. These Americans... Haven't seen a real wage increase in 30 years. Not true, but put aside. These Americans are fighting to hold their families together as divorce rates surge. For these Americans, health care is unaffordable. Drug addiction is growing. And too many of their local communities, especially rural ones, have been gutted as industry consolidates and ships jobs away. A society divided by class. Class. He's a semi-Marxist theologian. Where one class enjoy all, enjoys all the advantages it's a society gripped by hierarchy, and hierarchy, of course, is awful. When identity, when when industry ships jobs overseas, they say workers would, uh, they say workers should find another trade. Capital must be allocated to the most efficient use. Like that's what I say. When workers without college degrees can't get a good job, they say that's their fault. They should have gone to college. Now I gather, now I rather suspect that if globalization threatened America's tech industry or banking sector, our elites would sing a very different tune. We would hear how those industries are the lifeblood of the American economy and must be protected at all costs. This is a Republican. He, he sounds, I mean, first of all, it sounds like he got in the wrong party. But second oh, of all- no, um, no, I don't think so. This is the Republican party. Let's be Well, very, right. So this is, I, I bet Tucker loves him, right? I bet Tucker the, just loves him. Loves Donald Trump, yes. This is the Republican party in the era of Donald Trump. This is it. Um, and, you know, he goes on and he, and he goes on to what the cross represents. And he says the cross announces the weakness and need of every person. And that means it excludes the boasting and the pride of the few. The cross says the talented, the well-born, the well-educated do not deserve special privileges. Well, nobody deserves special privileges of government. They are not more valuable than anyone else. Well, by what standard? The call of God comes to every person and the power of God is poured out on all who believe. This has spiritual ramifications, but cultural and political ones as well. Paul says it is the humble, the everyday, 
those without social status whom God chooses to exercise, to whom God chooses to exercise his power. The meek shall inherit the earth, right? And so by extension, it is not the privileged, but the common man or woman, not the elite, but the everyday person who moves the destinies of the world. Really? Isn't it the Galileos or the Michelangelos and the Newtons and the, the geniuses who move? He's standing destiny? in a country that, anyway. We must rebuild a culture that affirms the dignity of the working men and women. This is Bernie Sanders. That protects their way of life and honors their central role in the life of this country. We, of course, working men and women implies that, you know, if you have a PhD, you don't work. If you're in a tech company, you don't work. You know, working means working, means, means Marxist BS. We must rebuild an economy that will offer opportunity for every American worker, whether a degree uh, wh whatever degree she may have, whether he may live, uh, wherever they may live, an economy that rewards hard productive work. For that, after all, is the work that built this country. We must build a democracy run not by the elites, but by the great middle of America. I don't know what he has against the poor, right? Why the middle of America? What happened to the meek shall inherit the earth? And, and the poor should do it, right? Maybe he doesn't think the poor can understand his message as much as the middle, where the middle strives to well, middle be most. higher. And so they're frustrated. Like you were talking about in your show yesterday, that they've been fed all this stuff for so long that they're the ones who are receptive to this sort of message. Yeah. A democracy that allows the working men and women to realize that God-given ability to govern themselves and help manage so, uh, the life of this nation. So, the so they govern themselves, but no choice. Yeah, the, the, cha the, problem, the problem with the world today is we have a philosophy of self-creation, self, you know, uh, you can create yourself, uh, a self-made soul, Ayn Rand would say, an unrestricted, unfettered free choice. That's the problem that we have today. I'd say what the problem we have today is our unrestricted, unfettered free choice is being hampered by government regulations, government control, and philosophies that keep telling us don't use your free choice. Don't exercise your free choice. Don't use your reason. Don't use your mind. But just, you don't have one anyway. You don't have free will anyway. Or, you know, do what God tells you and shut up. And, and so this is, the, this is conservatism. This is yeah. the party, which yeah. many of you support. This is the alternative to Bernie Sanders. I, I don't see it as an alternative to Bernie Sanders. No, and, and clamping down on social media and the so-called addictive part of social media is exactly along those lines. It's reducing choice to a certain extent. So what it says is they want to automatically limit the amount of time a user may spend on platforms across all devices Perfect. to 30 minutes a day hey. unless the user elects to adjust or remove the time limit. And if the user elects to increase or remove it, resets the time limit to 30 minutes a day on the first day of every month. So basically it's like, you know, we're big brother, big sister, trying to help you get a better habit. Now, if a person wants to choose a mechanism like this for himself or herself, you can buy, there's, you know, software and stuff that will help you do this. But this is not a proper function of, government. And you know, it, it's interesting because um, I was talking with Steve Simpson yesterday, who is just so brilliant. And he expanded some of my thinking on privacy in the following way, which is that even if there's something that government is doing where you say, okay, well, you know, how is government exactly infringing your rights here? Now you could say, okay, that we can point to how they are infringing the social media company's rights because it would be forcing the companies to install a feature into their platform that they've never had before that they would not offer of their own free choice, say, right? Yeah. Um, so it is infringing on their rights. It's to forcing them to do something. Uh, but suppose, you know, it's just, well, they took a collection up, a voluntary collection. You know, suppose Howley decided to do this. You know, he's going to do a GoFundMe. And the GoFundMe is going to result in a petition and a big campaign to get the social media companies to voluntarily put this feature in. Suppose he's going to do it that way, right? There are certain things that government just shouldn't be doing. Even yeah. if you can't point to a particular right violation, you know, government is something whose function is supposed to be inherently limited to positive. enumerated powers, right? Yeah. It's positive. 
everything the government does should have as its goal the protection of individual rights. Yes. Violate. So it's not just the stuff that violates rights. It's anything that is not focused on protecting rights is none of the government's business. Yes. Yes. So it's an active, the, the purpose of government is positive, not a negative. Yes. It's to act to protect our rights. Yes. And look, this is what Ayn Rand, remember Ayn Rand used to say, you know, Democrats want to regulate our boardroom and the Republicans want to regulate our bedroom. Now, today, both parties want to regulate both. But in this case, this is an example of the, a bedroom type thing, right? They want to regulate our behavior. See, Republicans don't think the material world is important. This is Ayn Rand's observation. Mm -hmm. They don't think the material world is important. What's important is the spiritual world, how you spend your time how you entertain yourself, what you do in your bedroom, what, what, you know, how you live, the material stuff, how you make money, ugh, that's dirty, who cares? Let the market deal with that. This is Luther, yeah. this is Calvin. It's too dirty for us to deal with. In, 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 the, in the utopia of the afterlife, we have communism. There's no, we don't deal with this capitalism stuff. So, so Republicans are capitalists, not because they appreciate the morality of capitalism, they're capitalists because the material world is not a world that they think is worthy of regulation. But the spiritual world, oh, here, it's really important that we impose on you a morality, we impose on you a way of life, we impose on you values because you might go really wrong and then land up in hell instead of in heaven. And our job as paternalistic government is to make sure. And of course, the left views the material world as important, the Marxists, the materialists. So they want to regulate the material world. They want to regulate capitalism. They want to regulate economy, economics. The spiritual world, that doesn't even exist. Who cares? It's all mumbo jumbo. Go do whatever the hell you want. Nobody cares. Well, we, we don't want to regulate that. And it's amazing to me how her identification of that, which is genius, right? Just mm -hmm. genius, that just plays out over and over and over again. And you can see that here. Even when Republicans talk about regulating capitalism, they claim it's for, for spiritual reasons. They claim it's for reasons of morality and reasons of, of, of virtue. So, so expanding on that, you could see why the big tech companies would be the enemy of both of those because they are fabulously wealthy. They're a tremendous engine of production. Of course, you know, they're very rich, the individuals who start the successful companies themselves. And then at the same time, it is a company that has a lot to do with offering spiritual values and having an effect on the culture. So they are going to be targeted by both the enemies of wealth and success and the enemies of anyone who is going to provide cultural influence at all. Because that what you know, what do the Republicans want to do? They want to root everything in traditional religious values. How dare you explore any sort of alternative lifestyle or new choices or, or things like that? I want to give a shout out if I could. Yeah, to... I, I just want to reinforce that point. I think okay. you're absolutely right. And that's why the focus is on social media, because social media combines those two. It combines both material production, wealth, and so on. And it combines the spiritual values. It's a place where people go to seek values. And, and that the Republicans want to control, that the right wants to control. Yeah, so I'll give a shout out, and then I guess also a comment, building on what you know you started here, uh, to Taylor Millard over at Hot Air. And he has a great headline when he's covering this story. I put both in the blog uh, program notes at don'tletitgo.com, by the way, the story you sent me, and then this version as well. His headline was, Missouri Senator, social media is too addictive, so let's censor it. And he's very careful that, you know, he's saying, look, what Howley is, proposing to do here is actually censorship. Good it's not so, yeah, it's not social media that's doing the censorship. It is the actual, you know, senators like Howley here. But the thing that I wanted to give him a shout out for, and then also maybe a comment is, you know, he's trying to answer, you know, how can Howley address a certain concern that he has? And he says, one has to wonder how Howley would treat all those who use social media as their primary source of income. So there's that, right? You know, he's going to cut off a lot of income. People are not going to be seeing the ads and stuff that all the, everyone else is paying for. Social media is a huge way to get exposure for your product or service these days. 
So uh, continuing with Millard's article, he says, this type of move to give the great God of government more power over big tech would severely harm streamers who seek to entertain via YouTube or Twitch by preventing them from even getting to understand their audience. Now, I would go broader and I'd say, you know, the mom and pop shop around the corner is also advertising on Facebook. And if you limited 30 minutes a day, those people as well. It's not just the people who stream on the internet who are going to be hampered by this. He says, what about those who seek to educate the populace through video. He says, for every social media influencer trying to assist a company through product placement, there are gobs of videos introducing people to F.A. Hayek or Herbert Spencer or Frederick Bastiat or Ayn Rand. Um, oh, right, I'll add in, right? You call, how to change a tile. How, you know, anything yeah. now that I want to do that any, instead of opening a manual, I go to YouTube and search, how do you do this? And there's a video somebody has on how to do it. And it's, it's <laughs> Jim, Jim, you know, there's this thing going around on Facebook and I, I did not partake, but it's a, you know, state your age and something you can't do. And Jim puts his age and he says, uh, and I can't poach an egg. And then somebody puts up a YouTube video about here, here's how you poach an egg. No, <laughs> right? so, there's videos on everything. I think they, except sex, there's pretty much videos on everything. Well, there's videos on that too. It's just, you aren't looking for YouTube. them, but Maybe on the oh, internet. on YouTube there aren't? Okay, that's right. Yeah, maybe someplace else. Right. Uh, on um, other channels, I'm sure. Yes. Um, yeah, they don't even allow you talking about sex, so, you know. No. They don't monetize it, no. Um, <laughs> I've got a good question here when you're ready. It's a little off topic, but it's generally in the in the direction. So tell me. Well, what... okay. So, well, so this is, of course, yet another attack on the social media platforms and probably Howley is encouraged by the fact that last week the FTC did its own clampdown and I've got links in the blog. I don't know when you want to talk about that. Do you want to talk about your question first and then go? What on. we need today, what I call the new intellectual would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brutes. 